So I was about to shrug this game off, at first I thought it was more of a stealth horror than a survival horror. I was just creeping around trying not to be seen. Started feeling like I was playing Metal Gear Solid. It's not until a few hours into the game that you can really appreciate the game's mechanics. Or even see an alien for that matter. That's when the game really comes into its own. I can sympathise with people that dislike the long intro, but I didn't mind it. The game does a great job of building atmosphere and this is all part of it. Here are three rules to help you survive the aliens. Number one is don't run. Seriously. This may sound like I'm exaggerating but I'm really not. One way to guarantee an alien will show up is by pressing the run button. This is actually a really nice feature because it allows you to stop and smell the roses so to speak. Far too many games allow you to just run through them and it doesn't do anything for the atmosphere. Taking time to slowly walk through a level really makes you appreciate it a lot more. Rule number two, don't shoot. There is really no benefit to firing your gun. In fact your gun is more of a hindrance than anything. There are two reasons you shouldn't fire your gun. Number one is that it's completely useless against the aliens. This is footage of me purposely breaking rule number one and two. To get the alien to come out of the vent all I have to do is run. In this part of the level the alien doesn't show up as long as you don't press that run button. But within about 10 seconds of pressing the run button an alien will always come out of this vent. I purposely used this part of the map because there only is one vent. As you can see the pistol is completely useless against the alien. I even tried to use it in combination with the pipe bomb and the explosive canisters behind the alien. But no matter what I tried, time and time again I just couldn't kill the alien. The best you can do is scare it away for a couple of minutes, but eventually it just comes back and kills you. Not only is the pistol useless against the aliens, but it also alerts them of your presence when you're fighting against the human characters. So even using the pistols against the humans is a bad idea. This is a very counterintuitive element to the game. On the one hand this is a powerful handgun and you feel relieved to finally get your hands on it. And even though it's practically a useless item, you still feel more secure when you have it equipped. And you still feel the need to aim down sights when you're walking the corridors of the spaceship. Even if pulling the trigger under any circumstances is a bad idea. Rule number three, don't rely heavily on your motion tracker. At first there's a compulsion to constantly view your motion tracker. I know I was glued to mine, but then I realised that the aliens are attracted to the noise. The motion tracker is kind of like Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. You can observe where the alien is using your motion tracker, but the very action of observing may change the location of the alien, making it come towards you. You can never know if the alien changed its location because of the act of observing the motion tracker. I think for that reason it's nearly best just to not use the motion tracker. So I rarely use it now. You can actually judge where the aliens are using the distinct sounds they make entering and exiting vents. With these rules in mind I decided to modify the control layout to be more accurate to what the buttons actually do. Considering when you press these buttons you die, I'll change the text over to that. So that's running, shooting and raising your motion tracker out the window. Your flashlight's also a dead giveaway to the aliens, so I'm going to change that too. So here we have four buttons on the controller that, if pressed at the wrong time, will kill you. The controls actually took a little time to get used to. No other first person game comes to mind with such an emphasis on stealth. In fact, no other first person game comes to mind with such little emphasis on firing your gun. Traditionally the movement on first person games are a little cumbersome. Most stealth games are in third person to give you a better field of view. This allows you to see even around walls at times. But being in first person and not knowing what's around the corner makes Alien much more claustrophobic feeling. I was quite impressed however with the peak feature. If you hold down the left bumper button you can use the analog stick to peek around corners and over the top of cover. This option is really fluid and it makes the first person view seem a little less stiff. 
I would be doing this game a huge injustice if I didn't mention the alien. If you thought being hunted by the nemesis in Resident Evil 3 was bad, you haven't seen anything yet. I can honestly say I have never seen an enemy that is as unpredictable and as organic as the alien. Trying to predict any type of pattern in the alien's movements is unprofitable. If you think you know where the alien's going to move next, you're wrong. When you think you're safe, you're not. There are times where the stalking is simply unreal. I have recorded countless examples of this, but I'm only going to have time to show you one. This footage is from quite early on when I first got the game, and I didn't have the sense to put my motion tracker away. Usually the alien will move around quite a lot, but on this occasion it just wouldn't leave this area. Looking back on it, it probably heard the noise from my motion tracker. After watching it pass my locker quite a few times, I thought the coast was clear. As I was getting ready to leave through the doorway, I noticed a blip on my scanner. I felt like I wouldn't have had time to get back into the locker, so I hid in the corner of the doorway. And then this happened. It would be one thing if the alien just walked through the door, but to see it sneak in through the door like that was really terrifying at the time. I remember just almost freezing on the spot. I didn't even have the sense to put my motion tracker away. I mean, what information could it possibly have told me? It was right in front of me. I didn't need it out at that point. But I think at this point I was just operating purely on instinct. There's just something really creepy about it crawling about like that. Later on I went to hide in a different vent in the hope that the alien would go away. But I think I paid the penalty for holding my motion tracker out for too long. Because the alien just burst through the door and ripped open the locker I was hiding in. At the times where there are no aliens and you can run and shoot, you'll probably have to deal with skin jobs. They are badass and can easily deal with a full clip of your pistol. Setting them on fire only makes them more dangerous. I found the encounters with the androids as tense, if not more tense than fighting the aliens. At least with the androids there's a glimmer of hope that you can get away from them. But when you do finally get to stretch your legs, after being so used to walking around the aliens, you feel like you're running in treacle. The Andes are more relentless and harder to kill than any zombie in any Resident Evil game I can think of. The fact that they grab you and you have to shake them off is very reminiscent of the early Resident Evil game zombies. When a new horror game or even movie is released, some people are quick to announce their bravery by telling people that it didn't scare them. Now of course fear is subjective, but I do believe that we are becoming more and more desensitised to horrors. All people have to do now to view real horror is go on to YouTube and watch videos of people being beheaded. It's little wonder to me that people don't find video games or fictional movies scary. It's no easy task to create a horror game or a survival horror game. The easy option for a game developer would be to sit back and make an action game. Not only is making a game that's enjoyable to play easier, it's also more likely to sell better. This is why I admire the developers of Alien Isolation. They have chosen to create a game that purposely makes the player feel uncomfortable while playing it. In an IGN review, the reviewer said someday someone's going to make an incredible alien game that checks every box, but sadly isolation is not it. This begs the question, what did the reviewer find inauthentic about this game? The developers of Alien Isolation consciously chose not to make an FPS game. There have been many attempts to make this so-called alien game that checks every box, and most developers take the easier option and just Take the most recent first person shooter game and skin it into an alien game. This is true with Alien on the Sega Saturn, which is basically Doom set in the alien world. More recently we had Alien Colonial Marines, and to repeat the mistakes made in that FPS alien game would have been a disaster for Sega. 
I don't think you'll find a more accurate portrayal of the movie. If ever there was a movie that was suited to a survival horror game based on it, the Alien franchise is it. Perhaps the reason so many other Alien games have been unmemorable is because they were first person run and gun games, which totally missed the ethos behind the movie. In the DLC, which pretty much came with the game, you get to play as the original cast from the film. There are other things in this game which make it true to the movie, but I don't care to mention them in this review as I fear it might spoil the experience for anyone who hasn't played the game yet. But let's just say that even in the core game without the DLC, there are areas you explore that feel like they could have been lifted straight out of the movie, yet they are completely unique. If there is a way for this game to have been more authentic to the movie, I can't think of it. If you enjoyed this video you may also like my Evil Within video where I discuss why it's not a survival horror game. I've also recently made tributes to Dark Souls 1 and 2 and you can watch these videos by clicking on them. You can also support me on my Patreon page, follow me on Twitter or add me on Google Plus or just subscribe for more videos.